what's up everybody welcome to the urban alchemistic oh it's not the bruja chat anymore it's i am the urban alchemistic welcome to my channel um i am in long beach strong beach you know what i'm saying um i'm on the north side n-o-r-f those who, who are from long beach y'all already know i'm on the north side big Spinals area all right um i just came back from uh doing some uber eats and then I stopped by one of my delivery uh, jobs, uh, delivering plant-based prep meals, um, like a food, like a prep meal delivery program, I mean, job or whatever. So um, I wasn't on the list. I did put up my shift and I did call out earlier because I didn't have no gas and shit, but I ended up manifesting some money out of nowhere. And I told them that I was gonna put me back on the schedule. But then when I showed up there, they didn't have my name on the front of the list. So I'm like, all right then. Um, but I was doing, um, I was already in the area already doing um, uh, Uber Eats deliveries. I like to say that I love Uber Eats more than DoorDash because Uber Eats lets you know off top um, how, how many miles you're going to drive, where the customer lives, and where the restaurant is so that you know whether it's worth it. DoorDash, they don't do that shit. You don't know until after you pick up the food, okay? And uh, people from DoorDash, they don't like tip. Okay, people on Uber that like to tip, you feel me? So, uh, and then I've been noticing DoorDash been really kind of dry. And um, if your ratings go down, if you don't have like a 5.0 or a 4.8 or 4.9, you're not going to get first dibs. When I first started DoorDash, I, I, had, I was a 5.0. I was perfect. Um, but some hating ass motherfucker gave me a fucking star, one star, and didn't leave no explanation, which I kind of wish they didn't. Um, they wouldn't have that rating system um, because that's what be fucking people up. And people can give you one star and you give them great service. They can just give you one star just because. And then that, you know, and that brings your ratings down. Therefore, you will not get first dibs on all the orders. But I know it's a huge difference. Once you go below 4.8 and then they, they demote you down too if you decline orders. So I personally like Uber Eats. Uber Eats is way better, um, and I'm actually online right now, so you might hear a ping, 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 and a ring, ring, ring. Um, yeah, so I'm heading back to my side of town to see if there, if I can get any pings there, but so far I made like $55, and um, the good thing about Uber is that they, the customers, they have two days to give you a tip, so sometimes I wait two days and I end up getting tips. And at 55, my turn to 75 or something like that. So I was on the list for my other job. So I just said, okay, I'm going to just stay back on Uber and just keep the um, the Uber on uh, until I get to um, my side of town. If it, if it don't ping, ping, ping and a ring, 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 then I'm going to get offline and take my ass back to my yard and go sleep. Because uh, I actually have work tomorrow. Um, I have work tomorrow. Yo, I'm a true fucking Caribbean. You know how they always try to joke and say that Caribbean people got seven, eight jobs? Me, I just got <laughs> I just got hired for yet another job. So check this out. Uh this got DoorDash Uber, the meal plan delivery place, the the cannabis delivery place, and then I got hired at another cannabis delivery place. Nigga, I got five jobs. And guess what? I finna get a six job. <laughs> Um, actually, I, I'm going to have six jobs, actually. There's another um, job that is only for lunchtime. So it's only like from 1030 to um, to 1230. And it's um, it's kind of like Uber Eats and DoorDash. But instead of, of doing it for residences, you're doing it for corporate businesses. All right. So it's catered lunches, corporate businesses. So you're going to you know, have to have a certain type of equipment or whatever like that. So they are they hire me too and a cannabis company hire me. So nigga <laughs> I got six jobs and then my seventh job I'm finna go to the onboarding recruitment tomorrow. All of these are self-paced type of jobs or whatever and some are only for a few hours, but when you add it all together, it's cool, it's flexible, it works for me and my schedule, you know. So yeah, I'm a true Caribbean. I got I got seven jobs, y'all. Uh, tomorrow I'm about to go. <laughs> I got six jobs so far, so I'm about to get the seven job tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to an onboarding um thing, 
or whatever. So yeah, um, I, so <laughs> the reason why I came up on this video is because I wanted to like make a video um, covering two topics, but I want to make a video video about how I manifested a new car. So in case y'all ain't notice, I got one new gear. Okay, I got me a new gear. And you know, you guys know I always name my cars, right? So um, this right here is a white Jeep truck, okay? It's an SUV, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. I love it. I, I wasn't really trying to get a Jeep, but that was what fit in my budget. That was what they had, so I took it. I personally like Japanese cars, such as like, um, I like Japanese cars like Honda, Toyota, like that. I actually wanted a, a, a Honda a CRV, you know, I wanted a Honda CRV. Or at least a Toyota um, RAV4 or Highlander, something like that. I want a nice little family car or whatever, right? But this is a beautiful car, and I wanted to show you guys how I was able to manifest the car um, using um, um, candle magic, affirmations, and visualizations, and things like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it, and scripting as well. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, So basically, okay, and then the second subject is gonna be like after the fact, but I do notice that um, since I got in this car, I've been feeling the need to just, it, it, it lights a fire under me to where I'm like, yo, now that I have a car note now, cause this is my first time ever having a car note. You know, I've always been like a used car kind of chick or whatever. So now I'm, I'm, I'm up on the next side. And so now I have to deal with a car note. So every day since I got this car, I've been trying to hustle. My goal is to make a hundred dollars a day, uh, max minimum fifty. You know, um, so anywhere between fifty and hundred. I just been kind of like on some hustle shit to make sure that I'm always have money in my pocket uh, because of this new responsibility. Um, so I got this car. Um, how long have I had this car? I've had to had the car that long. I probably had it for like a week and a, probably almost two weeks. I had the car for almost two weeks. I think, yeah. When did I buy it? I think I bought it. Um, I forgot. <laughs> I think I think like the first first few day first week of October because I remember I was already going up to the place to get it. Um, I, yeah, I go into the, I go went up to the place to get it. Um, uh, it's Enterprise Rent a Car. Uh, you know how they have their own enterprise car sales. I decided to go th with enterprise because I rented out cars with enterprise um, several times before uh, when I used to have issues with my used cars and stuff and it used to be in the shop. I used to use um, a lot of enterprise and a lot of Lyft and I never had a mechanical issue with the cars. So I figured instead of going to a dealership where they be trying to set you up by getting cars that got fucking recalls and all kind of rust that wrong with it. I said, instead of doing that, I said, oh, I can just go to Enterprise since I've always had, you know, a good relationship with Enterprise. Um, I said, let me just go through there and um, do it. First attempt, it didn't work out. Second attempt worked seamlessly. I'm going to tell you guys what I did to manifest this new car. Now, um, what I did, okay, so... As far as the candle magic goes, y'all know I, I'm, I love candle magic. I'm a candle magic connoisseur. So y'all know like, okay, the candles that I burned was just pretty much a money machine candle. So El Maquino de Dinero, I burned that. Um, I also burned, a, um, uh, what else, what was it? Uh, I think I did, um, as far as candle magic, what did I do? Um, I think, yeah, I just burned the, the money candle and then I mostly was using conjure oil. So I had boss fix oil. Okay. I had boss fix oil. I had high John oil. Okay. Um, I anointed my paperwork, you know, you got to give, you know, your check stubs and all the other good stuff, your utility bill, all that shit, whatever. Right. So I anointed all of my paperwork with high John oil and boss fix oil. Okay. So that's, that's one. Two, um, like I said, for the candles, I, I, I think as far as I can remember, as far as I can remember, um, I think I, I definitely burned a money, a money machine, um, uh, candle and, uh, 
was the other one? I think it was um, a high John candle, something like that. Either high John, but I, I would suggest if you're looking to get a car, I would suggest um, get like a, a high John candle because that's good for everything. You know, um, it's good for luck and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I did burn a luck candle. Okay, so I, I burned um, um, Money Machine. Then I burned a, a good luck candle. Okay. Um, and then um, High John. Okay, so as far as the candles. So then I, okay, after anointing the paperwork, doing the the candle uh, magic work, then I started looking up um, looking up other people's videos on YouTube, how I manifested a car, how I manifested a car, whatever. So I was watching that binge watch that for a little bit and then i came across a scripting which i heard about scripting before and i wrote i was actually kind of low-key doing scripting before i knew what scripting was because i was using index cards and i watched this one girl um she was talking about using index cards for uh, loa law of attraction to um to manifest things right so I bought me a stack of index cards and, you know, I would write down notes and stuff. And, I, you know, I, I love my index cards. I use them when I take notes during my, my tarot readings and all that good stuff, right? So, um, so I took my, I, I started to get into scripting. And so what I did was, is I took an index card and I started to do a scripting about the new car. I said, I put, I said, thank you, um, universe. Thank you, my spiritual gang gang for getting me this beautiful car. It's a beautiful truck. Da, 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 da. I put down Honda CRV and uh, whatever, you know, SUV. I said, thank you for this beautiful truck. You know, I love it. Woo, da, woo, da, woo. And I added some other stuff that I wanted to manifest, but I was just acting as if it already happened already by being thankful about it, right? Then after I did my scripting, um, I started to close my, um, I actually started listening to these affirmation videos. They're on YouTube. It's called, um, new car affirmations. If you want to get a new car, definitely listen to it. I definitely feel like it made a difference. New car affirmations. So there's these affirmations that play for hours, 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 and they'll have these subliminals, two different people talking like a man and a woman. And they'll be like, I just purchased a new car. I just purchased a new car. And then the other male voice would be like, I love my new car. I love the new car smell. Thank you so much, Universe, for giving me this car. I love the seats. I love the wheels. Da 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 da, -da. I manifested a new car. I, I manifested a reliable car. I have the car of my dreams. Like that, like that, like that, right? So I was listening to that. I fell asleep with that for the, uh, Alec. the day after, the day of um, me going up there for the first time to Enterprise to, you know, do all the preliminary stuff and the talk and for them to show me what kind of cares they have for me. Uh, throughout that whole process, I was listening to it every night. So I talked to them at the end of September, right? Like the 28th, 29th, the end of September. And then I got it within the first week of October. Every fucking night, I was playing new car affirmations for hours. There were eight hours. I fell asleep to it, woke up with it. Um, when I was, uh, listening to affirmations before I go to sleep, I pretty much meditated myself to sleep. Shout out to Dreamwise, meditated myself to sleep. Um, I closed my eyes and I visualized myself inside the car, inside of a modern car. Cause like I said, I always drove like older model used car. So I picture myself inside of a model car, you know, with the screen and all the little lights and all this little shit. And I pictured myself in the car, touching the wheels, smelling the new car smell. I'm adjusting the seats, uh, telling my daughter to put on her motherfucking seatbelt, you know, like I, I started to get myself in the zone. Okay. And, um, uh, at first I could, I could tell the first sales representative, he was going to try to juke me. Okay. He was really going to try to, try to, uh, try to chance me and get over on me. But for some reason, Spirit had divinely blocked him because I felt like he was low-key trying to get over or trying to lowball and, like, cut corners. And for some, and for a divine reason, um, my spiritual gang gang kind of just, like, blocked him. And, I, and they ended up getting me this woman who was actually more helpful and more, um, especially when it came to my trade-in. Even though I had an older model car, the guy was like, oh, it's only going to be such and such dollars. I'm like, damn. But when um, the woman ended up taking, cause he was gonna give me a car that I didn't even want. He was gonna give me a Chevy uh, Equinox or whatever, right? A 2018 uh, Chevy Equinox. 
So I was looking at it or whatever. It's cool, whatever. But then I started sitting down. I started while he was doing his thing. I was like, let me research on this car. So I started researching on the car. I started researching on the car. And I found out that um, the Chevy Equinox have some issues. Like one of the main ones that kind of made me be like, mm, was the fact that it tends to roll back. It's one of those push start cars. And I'm not really a fan of push start cars. It, it's, it seems pretty cool. But then at the same time, um, this particular car um, tends to roll back. Okay, so when you have the car parking on the hill, it tends to roll back. And a lot of people have reported their cars rolling back, hitting people and shit like that. And uh, because I do delivery driving for a living, um, and sometimes for some of the jobs my daughter is with me, um, I can't risk that happening if i'm getting out and i'm delivering something i can't risk my car going backwards on a fucking hill and they be having me in fucking hollywood hills and shit you know the car gonna roll back and you know what i'm saying all kind of ill shit gonna happen so i was just like nah i can't have that or whatever so i tried to talk to the guy he acted he didn't want to um i told him i was like yeah do you have any jeeps or um uh, hondas or anything like that nah nah just this one yeah you know da da da, -da full of fucking shit right but anyway, like I said, spirit blocky. And then I ended up getting this other lady who was very nice. She ended up giving me a better trade-in price. And I know my shit is old. I know my shit was a clunker. It wasn't that old. It was a 2002, um, it was a 2002 uh, Mazda Tribute. I know my shit was old, but goddamn, nigga, you can't give me a couple hundred or something. Damn, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, it was really low balling. Uh, so the girl ended up hooking me up, right? She ended up hooking me up. And she ended up giving me a, a way better deal. And I, uh, and so what ended up happening is uh, the, the the Chevy Equinox, I, I didn't have my money on time. I was in between paydays. So I was going to accept it. But then for some reason, Spirit was like, nah, you don't need to have that car. Because you're going to roll back in that motherfucker. And it's going, you know, you're going to have to pay people for fucking up their car. And get yourself hurt out there. Get, get your daughter hurt out there. And shit like that. Now, nah, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? You need a car that's going to be safe, you know? Okay, because my last old car, I, I got juked. I'm not going <laughs> to... That's a long fucking story I'll talk about another day, but... That car used to... Oh, my God, that car gave me a lot of trouble because the person that sold the car to me was a fucking scamp, okay? The nigga was a scamp. Straight up and down, a fucking crook, you know? And so, uh, you know, that the, the bitch ain't fucking selling cars no more. <laughs> Anyways, but he ain't. He ain't selling no more, no more cars. Anyways, um, so, uh, dang, I guess my shit ain't pinging. I guess we gonna go home. So, anyway, um, so, uh, I didn't have, um, the money on time. So, I was like, oh, can y'all wait until an extra day? They was like, oh, somebody might come and take it or whatever. I was like, well, I really don't give a fuck. But I was like, okay, well, hey, it is what it is. Uh, if they don't have it, then they meant for me to have it. Because low-key, I don't, I don't really want it. So I told her, I said, well, that wasn't really my first choice anyway. So if it's gone by tomorrow, it's okay. So I had to take money out of my stocks, which I really wasn't trying to. Because I had like 555 shares with a cannabis stock. And I was trying to hold off on that bitch. But it's still low, so I can still buy it. But I was trying to really like stack up on my shares for this particular uh, 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 cannabis company or whatever. So I had to take my money out of my socks and then I had to wait until the next day. So when the next day came around, the Chevy Equinox was taken. So I was like, boom, it wasn't meant for me to um, get this car because I didn't really want it. And on top of that, it wasn't safe. And I just had a sick little feeling about it. And the guy, he just was just trying to sell the car. He was trying to get a sale. He didn't give a fuck. Uh, so then um, because he didn't, he ended, he ended up selling his car, selling the Chevy Equinox to somebody else sucker they end up selling it to somebody else and then um so then they passed me my case over to the this other girl i think her name is claudia or something like that so i went to went with claudia and claudia hooked me up she gave me a better trade-in prize she ended up finding me a car that was cheaper than the car that he offered me he gave me a, she gave me a better trade-in price much higher trading price than what he offered me okay and a much lower car note than what he was gonna offer me. So what it wasn't meant for me to do business with him because he probably one of the niggas that's kind of shady and like to get over upon women. 
and now I end up getting a woman and she, and she gave me that woman's touch and shit like that and she was she took good care of us right so um I was happy I got a better deal because I told spirit I did a reading too and that's another thing too I did a reading on it before before she had texted me and said oh the Chevy Equinox is already taken or whatever before she texted me I asked spirit I I, I throw out my cards I asked spirit I said yo should I take this car? Cause I got a funny feeling about a spirit. Like, let me know if I if I'm if I'm just being a paranoid bitch. Like, you know, let me know. So, spirit told me that if I, based off the cards, I forgot what the cards was, but based off of what the cards said, the cards was basically saying that. Um, should I park across the? Way? You know, I'm park across the way because I don't like these motherfuckers like black people over here. Um. They they um basically the cards was saying that if I would have took the deal with the guy. I would have been unhappy. It, I think it showed um, uh, nine of pentacles in reverse, uh, nine of cups in reverse, and um, seven of seven of swords. Right. So he was trying to he was trying to dupe me. Right. So basically the cards were saying that. Basically the cards are saying that if I would have took the Chevy Equinox, I was I wasn't gonna be uh, completely happy, and you know he would have got over and he wouldn't have cared. I think I had gotten seven of swords. Um, I think I would have got, uh, seven of swords, um, nine of coins in a reverse, uh, seven of, seven of swords upright and king of swords upright. So he would have been like, oh, well, oh, whatever. You know, I already got my sale. Oh, well, bitch, uh, you know, like that. So, um, I was like, okay. And so as soon as I was finished with the reading, I was like, hmm. Then next year, the girl, she texts back. She said, I'm going to take over your, your case now. My name is Claudia. I'm going to take over. Uh, David um, already sold the 2018 Chevy Equinox to somebody else. So I'm going to take over uh, for you and stuff like that. And I said, okay, cool. I said, that wasn't my first choice anyway. But yeah, cool. Let's do business, whatever. And then um, I had both of my candles burning in front of me. <sighs> I believe it was... I know one was um lucky one of those luck candles, you know the lucky ones that got the horseshoe and the four leaf clover and them green lucky candles. I had that. And I believe the um the second candle had to be like a negocio candle or some type of high john candle, I forgot. But I was just telling spirit I had laid my hands over the candles. I put the oils on there and I said, "Okay, uh, my scripting paper, my little index card. I took the scripting card that said, oh, thank you for this call. Woo -woo 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 -woo. I put it underneath the two candles. Okay. And then I was like, okay, spirit. Okay. So this car is out of the question. I said, please. I want to, um, I wrote down on more stuff on the index card. Like I want to manifest, I, I shall manifest a, uh, a car that is, you know, cheaper, a decent car note. Preferably a Japanese car, preferably a SUV. I'll settle for a hatchback or a Prius or something like that because Priuses are very, they're very spacious, very roomy. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm a, I want to manifest that. Woo -da -woo -da -woo. So I'm just writing down the specifics on a piece of paper. Like, um, you know, I want a fishing car. I want a car that's safe, don't have no recalls, don't have blah, 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 blah. You know, because I'm, like I said, because I do delivery driving. Um, I'm going to be in very hilly places and I want to make sure that my shit is good. Like, you know, so right after I finished, wrote it down, y'all, I swear. Right after I finished, um, right after I finished, um, wrote it down, she texts me back. She said, oh, we have great news, Cassandra, you know, um, yeah, that's my good man, bitch. Uh, they call me Cassie for short. There's like great, great news, um, um, Miss Cassandra. You know, we found a car that works with your budget. It's the first car that you like. It's actually a Jeep. Check it out. Here's the link or whatever and stuff. It's actually cheaper, way cheaper than the 2018 Equinox. It was cheaper by like $500, $600, you know, and um, which will make it easier to pay off. So um, she che I checked it out. I'm like, cool. It's a white Jeep Cherokee Latitude, four-wheel drive. 2016 okay my first little you know fancy schmancy you know uh modern car whatever so i'm looking at it i'm like yo and i just remember something right just a couple of days ago okay so last year i had a dream that i had a white jeep 
It had to been, yeah, I think it was either, yeah, I think it had to been either last year. No, no, I think it was earlier this year. Yeah, I think it had to been either last, late last year or earlier this year. I had had a dream. I think I had mentioned it before. I miss my old phone. My auntie has my old phone, but in my notes, I actually had documented um, all of my dreams that I had in um, 2020, since February 2020, when I first started taking Hirataki. Um, I'm mad I didn't back up, back up my um, my notes app because I would have been able to read out my dream to you guys. But I remember this one in particular. I remember the place that I was staying in. I remember exactly what it looked like. I had an extra child, okay? I had a male child. So this was in the future. I had a male child. He was um, brown skin or light brown skin or whatever. And he had all this wild hair and he had like a striped shirt and a diaper. And he running around and I'm by the couch and I'm folding my clothes, looking at him running around. I see my daughter sitting down on the table or whatever, chilling or whatever and stuff like that. And I remember going out, out of my place and uh, I have like white fence, white metal fence that's paint, painted white. I come out of my white metal fence and I see this beautiful, it was actually a Jeep Patriot that I dreamed about. It was a Jeep, Jeep Patriot, a white Jeep Patriot. And what was peculiar about this page, I see the little thing say Patriot, I believe. And uh, what was peculiar about this uh, white Jeep Patriot is that it had like, you know, the sign for um, Crown Royale, y'all know the drink Crown Royale. Okay. Y'all know the logo with the with the crown that king crown that that crown y'all crown um in this dream though it was a white jeep cherokee with black trim so the handles were black and it was black trim and on top of the hood was a crown royale crown it was a black crown royale crown that was fused onto the hood like some kind of custom thing that i must have asked for but it was unique. It was cool. But then again, it's like if you needed to work on your car, how would you be able to take it out? It might fuck up the window if you have to open up the hood, you know. But anyways, it was a nice big crown royale crown on top of it. And I was just looking at the car in my dream like, yeah, I finally arrived, bitch. Like, hmm, like that. And I remember that dream. So fast forward to now, right? Fast forward to now. Um, when, when I click on the link, lady said, Oh, I got a, I got a car for you. Check it out. Right. Um, when I clicked on it and I looked on, on the website and I saw the car, I was like, it's very similar to what I had in my dream. Instead of it being a Jeep Patriot, it was a Jeep Cherokee, uh, a Jeep Cherokee, uh, Latitude. So when I saw the car, I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I just realized a couple of days ago that I dreamt about this car, something similar to it. So when I saw the car, you know how you look at a car and you just know it's going to be yours? Just like how when you buy a purse or you buy a pair of shoes, you can look at a purse and you just know. You can see yourself walking around with it. You can see yourself fumbling around in your purse for shit. You just look at something and you just know it's going to be yours. Just like when you're looking for shoes, you just know. You can picture yourself walking in it, putting it on. You just know it's going to be yours. You just have that feeling like, bitch, I'm taking you home. Period. So when I saw that car, y'all, I was like... I started doing the visualizations again. Me getting in the car, smelling the smell, looking around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, okay, great. I love it. Let's go. So I go go to the shop. You know, my money's already available. I go to the shop. My daughter sits in the back of the car. She loves it. She doesn't even want to get out of the car. She was like about to have a whole fucking... She was about to start pop locking and about to have a whole fucking attitude. Um... <laughs> She that showed that she was she loved the car, and I was just like, cool. So everything ended up working out good. Um, I need to go and take that mechanical plan off of there. Oh my god, um, but everything ended up working out good, y'all. And I ended up manifesting my car, so that's how I manifested my car, you guys. Um, through candle magic, through scripting, through uh, visualizations, and listening to car affirmations literally all night every day that candle was burning i would read out my script after writing my script i would read it out and then visualize myself 
you know, visualizing myself in it, all the places I would go in it, uh, and stuff like that. And telling myself, you know, I deserve to have something nice. I deserve to have a nice, a nice, a nice car, an efficient car. And since, uh, delivery driving, since the lion's gate, the lion's gate said to pick something, to pick a trade, pick a, 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 a certain trade that you're going to do and you'll flourish in it. I know I said that a couple of times already, but that was what I, I did a Lionsgate ritual. Um, uh, you guys can check the video out. I did a Lionsgate ritual and I had wonderful results since then. Um, so the, I, I did take advantage of the Lionsgate portal and it was just, I was re looking at a video and the guy basically saying like, yeah, whatever that you, whatever job or business line of business that you choose, stick with it and you're going to flourish in it. So delivery driving started to be my thing. And so I was like, I got to invest in a better car because I had problems with my last car. The shit be breaking down and all kind of stuff. And I, I didn't want to have to worry about my shit breaking down <clears throat> in the middle of doing delivery. Sometimes it didn't start. I had to keep starting it and keep starting it. This shit was embarrassing. People looking like, do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> so I was thankful. Um, and I was like, you know what? I definitely do deserve to have something nice. You know what I'm saying? Cause some people will look down on you when you have a, when you have an older model car. I'm just realizing that now, cause now that I have a newer car, it's like people look at you a little bit differently. I, I noticed when you have an older car, people kind of just like feel a certain way about you or stuff like that. I never really noticed it. Cause I never really cared about stuff like that. I just be like, as long as my shit runs cool, but I consider this to be a late birthday gift for me um, for me to get something nice for myself. And then when I got a reading, shout out to priestess, I said, Ra, man, she told me, she said, yo, you got to do nice stuff for yourself. You know, go out and spoil yourself, get something nice for yourself, you know, cause you're focused so much on surviving and stuff like that, you know, do something nice for yourself. And yeah, that's what I need to do. Cause sometimes you'd be so focused on trying to get bills paid that you, that you be penny pinching and shit like that. And you never, you know, you put, you know, I'm, I'm always like, I don't mind looking bummy as long as my kid look good, as long as her hair is done, whatever like that. I don't mind, you know, so I don't give a shit, you know, but, um, you know, I've been maintaining myself pretty good, both me and her and, you know, trying to stay within the budget. And she was like, just do something nice for yourself. So I was like, why not? I deserve to have efficiency. I deserve to have a reliable car where I can do my job and I, I don't have to worry about the car breaking down on me. I don't have to worry about the car shutting it off while I'm on the fucking freeway. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So everything ended up working out, you know, the car affirmations, I feel like that really did, did a difference. The, the scripting, uh, definitely did, the, did, 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 uh, what it was supposed to do. Um, and stuff like that, you know? So, um, yeah, that's how I manifested <laughs> my car guys. So, I'm very, very happy um, with my purchase. I'm going to just use these fucking miles up. And, and on top of that, this car had less mileage than the other car that he offered me, the, the, the Chevy Equinox. The Chevy Equinox had like 80, 84,000 miles, and then this one only had 54. So it was, it was less mileage, uh, less of a car note. Uh, it was cheaper, and I had got a better deal and a better person. So you see how Spirit will put you in the right position you see, if, if I didn't do all these things that I said, I would have went with that guy and I would have went with my, I would have went with that guy and I would have been very dissatisfied, but spirit blocked this person because they knew that this person was, uh, no good. Like they were going to try to get over on me because I was a woman and they just wanted to fucking make a sale. But spirit put me in the position to be helped by another woman, which with somebody that I could trust because that would give me the woman's touch. And she went above and beyond her and her supervisor, who was also a woman. They both went above and beyond for me and made it work for me, you know? And so I was very thankful for, for that. So sometimes spirit will put you in the right place at the right time with the right people. It's almost as if they were born to do this for you. Yeah. Like they were born to do this for you. Um, so yeah, uh, candle magic, uh, scripting, acting like it, uh, ha acting like it happened already. Um, there's also another type of scripting called three, six, nine, using the Nikola Tesla thing where you write down your affirmation three times, 
Then you skip a few lines. You write your affirmation again six times or another affirmation six times. And then you write another affirmation mm-hmm. nine times. Tree six, nine. Uh, I heard that one works very well as well. So basically candle magic, um, any kind, any type of candles that'll help to like, like road opener, um, road opener, high John, um, money, obviously. So you can manifest money um precipitado rush like there's certain counts you can use just be creative um and then the conjure oils that i used was from art of the root which was um uh, boss fix oil money drawing oil you can use boss fix oil even when you're dealing with dealerships and other places and things like that because whoever's the boss you want to make sure that the boss roll out the red carpet for no so boss fix car are you dealing with bossy people boss fix car um oil you know so i use boss fix i use i bought boss fix employment oil okay i anointed my my papers with employment oil so that they can accept my payment and ver- i mean accept my employment and verify it and you know, everything goes smooth with that um and money drawing oil and high john oil so those are the four conjure oils uh that i mainly used um, I anointed my paperwork, uh, my my license. All of my paperwork has been anointed. I anointed my hands, so that when I'm when she hands me any type of her paperwork, I'm rubbing my hands over it. I have my hands, my hands got the oil on it, so I'm like touching the paperwork, touching the pen that she touching on, and all that shit, right? So I did all that, <sighs> and um, of course, oh yeah, the visualizations. I always talk about that on my channel and the affirmations, the car, new car affirmations. They got new car affirmations. They got new home affirmations. So definitely check it out. Um, so yeah, guys, so that's pretty much, um, how I manifested, uh, my 2016 car. And ever since I got this car, I've been hustling because it's, I got this new responsibility of, uh, and I feel like I have to always have money on my pocket. I don't have to, I feel like I want to hurry up and pay the car off. I want to always have money. So I've been hustling every um, single day to try to make sure I make at least 50 to to $100 a day. So far, so good. And um, and uh, here's the thing, too. And the, the, so now I'm going to go into my second subject, too. Um, and this is, like, connected to it because uh, when good things are happening to you, you, it's best to try to keep it a secret as much as you can. Um because people will evil eye the fuck out of you. They don't want to see you do well. And they will evil eye you and try to and covet the things that you have. Even though they know that you truly deserve it. Okay? There could be people... I'm talking about the spirit of jealousy. And there could be people who have more than you. Always have more than you. you never been jealous of them. you never even compare yourself to them or compete yourself with them. But the moment something good happens to you they feel some kind of way. All right. So, um, for the most part, I got, you know, um, you know, good feedback and stuff like that. When I got my car, you know, I told my auntie, I'm like, guess what auntie, I got my car. She said, I'm happy for you. You know, you do need a a newer car and stuff like everybody knew my, everybody knew all my car trip. You can ask my auntie, her husband, everybody knew I had an older car that gave me a lot of trouble. And I loved my car. I loved my clunker, but it gave me so much fucking trouble. So much. I put so much money in that car. You wouldn't even believe you would be like, why the fuck did you even do that? Like you could have been went to enterprise or any dealership and put down like the money that I spent on that car. I spent more than what it was worth. And I could have honestly used that same $3,000 change to pay down for this car. I could have honestly did that, but you know, anywho, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, my aunt, she was proud, she was happy, she's like, okay, cool, yeah, you need to have a nice car, you know, it gives you confidence, or whatever like that, you know, you have the right to have some nice, you have the right to, you know, get nice things for yourself, and it's always good to see a good-looking woman who's dressed nice, and coming out of a nice car, like, it just gives you, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, and I felt what she was saying, that's real shit, and, you know, um, she, you know, are they toasted? You know, so I got good feedback, you know, for my car, you know, everybody was like, cool, you know, not everybody know that I have a new car, but you know, the ones that, um, I could, obviously I couldn't hide it from my auntie because she babysits for me. I'm always over there. So I was going to pull up in, in that shit anyway, you know? So, um, you know, 
So, and now let me tell you what happened. So, so I, I haven't, uh, so I only see my sister every now and then or whatever. Right. And, um, you guys know that like, you know, we were estranged for, uh, pretty much most of 2020 and stuff like that from December 19th to when did they force their ways back in to my life? Uh, September or late September, 2020. That's when they, you know, force their way back in or whatever. Um, and I just kind of remain cordial because I already know shit stink and, you know, yeah. So anyways, let me tell you what happened. This is how I know about the, the spirit of jealousy, how, how motherfuckers really be, right? So, um, when I got the car, when I put up in my car, my, my auntie, she was happy. She was excited for me, but she did take a video of that. I was like, girl. But I ain't worried about it because, you know, my car, I already have protections on my car and all this shit. You know, I make sure I have my protections before I pull up any motherfucking wear. Um, just in case, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think that she, you know, but just in case, just in case, just in case, you never know. Um, but yeah, she was just proud of me. I think she just, oh, I think she was just really proud. You know, I didn't even make a big deal about it. My auntie was like, oh my God, you know, whatever. And here's a toast to my niece. She just got, oh, got her new car. Congratulations. You know, she the one who made a big deal about it, which is cool. You know, it is an accomplishment. It is a milestone. It really is a milestone. So let me tell you about the spirit of jealousy. Okay. So then, all right. So recently, was it last weekend? Was it last weekend? Yeah. So recently, last weekend, I went out to an event um, at the Regency West. This is my first time there. Regency West in Lemur Park, for those living in LA. Um, and they had, you know, those 88, 11 parties, 88th, 11th mile parties. I've been going to a party since, oh shit, we've been going to a party since like... I think we went like back in 2019 or something like that. But yeah, I think we went back in like 2019, 2020. Uh, so we went to one of their parties, their day parties and shit like that. So um, I didn't tell my sister that I got a new uh, car because I don't feel I need to tell nobody stuff, especially on my mom's side of the family. Like, <clears throat> because I noticed a pattern when it came to like narcissism and all stuff, like narcissistic family. I noticed a pattern especially with certain people in my family on my mom's side too, on my mom's side, but specifically because whenever good things happened to me, it never lasted long when I was around certain people because they were secretly jealous and they wanted to secretly sabotage me to keep me at the bottom with them. Um, they knew that I had the potential and the, the determination to go far and they were always keeping tabs on me or making sure that I was right there. And me, I've, I've always been a person where I, you know, I share my good things and my bad things with people. So I learned to kind of scale that back a little bit because that was not helping. So anyways, so I didn't feel the need to always explain, especially if I know in the past somebody was very like a Decepticon <laughs> towards me and have been jealous and have been vindictive towards me. I'm not going to want to share nice things with you. If you happen to find out, you happen to find out, right? But I'm going to make sure I have my protections in place. So anyway... Um, so we all supposed to be up there. So my, my sister, she, she w already had a, a, a new car before I had a new car. She started off with clunker buckets, just like I started off with my clunker bucket. So she have got herself a 2014, I believe a Toyota Camry, beautiful car, whatever. I wasn't hating on her. I was happy for her, everything. You know, I was like, okay, that's what's up. Like you need a reliable car. I wanted you to have a reliable car because of my, my baby nephew. She just had a baby. And I was like, yeah, you need to have a reliable car. You don't need to be broke down the side of the road and you got a young baby and all that stuff. Like, I'm glad that you got, you got your car. Me, I'm not a hating person. I don't come, I don't compete or compare myself with anybody or anything. So I'd be happy for motherfuckers. Motherfuckers can't be happy for me. So anyway, um, so she went, she went up to the Regency first and then me and my other female cousin, which is my auntie's daughter, we all, um, she got her car, I got my car, my cousin, my sister got her car. So my sister showed up to the place first and she parked somewhere and then I come and then my, my cousins are coming. And so there was time for us to leave. Cause by the time we get to the, we always come to fucking day parties late. We always do this shit. We be swearing up and down. We're going to be there by four and then we don't come there till like seven, eight o'clock. We always like to come to day party late. Anyways. <laughs> so my sister was like, um, I said, my sister was like, yeah, I forgot where I parked it. I said, okay, I'll take you. 
I'll take you to go get the car, go get it. But I think she knew that I had a new car because they watch my stories, which why I have certain people. I hit my stories with certain people. I sure fucking did. Yeah. Cause motherfuckers was clocking me, uh, but that's another thing. But I did, but you know, I think she did see my story. So she saw that I had a new car, but I only show when I did my stories, I didn't show the outside of my car. Cause I ain't, I'm not stupid. I showed that just the inside. So she had an idea that I had in the car, but I just didn't, I just don't really say nothing. But see, people be acting like because we used to be close and they still gonna have the same access. Like I'm supposed to just tell you every little good thing that happened to me. Why the fuck would I do that knowing what I know now? Why would I do that? So anyway, I was like, well, she gonna find out that I have this new car anyway. So whatever. And she, like I said, she already watched my story. So I think she already knew that I had a new car. She already knew because I saw the thing in the story that she, that she saw it. Right. So then sometimes you don't really see people's stories. Sometimes you let your stories run and you put your phone down and your stories will flip and it'll go to the next person. So sometimes you don't always see it, but you never know. Anyhow, <coughs> anyway, so I was like, yeah, um, I'll take you to your car or whatever. I said, let's go meet our other cousin because she didn't end up going inside the club because it was already about to close and no sense in paying for it. So I was like, let's go meet up with her. She got the drink in her car. Woo, 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 let's go right so then i take her to take her to my car so she thinks she gonna walk up to the old car right so when she see me go boop boop this um <laughs> she's like oh this is your car what what i'm like yeah nigga i got a new car yeah this my shit nigga yeah woo, woo, woo. she's like oh my god woo, 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 woo. she was happy and then that spirit of jealousy just went just washed over her right i could feel this shit right so anyway, she get into the car, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I got it, whatever, you know. Enterprise, do, do, do. Oh my God, what year is it? What you know, all this stuff, whatever. Cause in their mind, they want to compare themselves, right? It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, what the? I was like, yeah, it's a um, 2016, boo, 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 whatever. She's like, oh, okay. Um, she's like, um, and then she says this comment that really kind of like struck me, like, really, bitch. So she was like, um, after she got excited, she was like, oh, okay, Chelsea, oh, okay, um, oh, you always trying to upstage me, or something like that, you always trying to outdo me, or something like that, upstage me, or outdo me, or something like that, you always gotta upstage me, or something like that, or whatever, and I was like, uh-huh, yeah, nah, um, and I thought that was weird, like, what was the point in even saying something like that? Uh, when you got your 2014 car and I still have my 2012 car, I didn't give a fuck. Nigga, I was happy for you. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't say, oh my God, she, now she got a better car than me. Oh my God. I didn't give a fuck because what's, what's meant for you is meant for you and what's meant for me is meant for me. You know what I mean? What's divinely belonged to me can never be taken away. So I'm not worried about you. I don't compare myself to the next bitch. But this is what narcissists do. They constantly in competition with somebody and nobody nobody's in competition with you. Nobody fucking cares. I've been noticing that bitches be trying to make me be jealous of them. They keep mentioning the same shit over and over and over and over again every time they see me. It's like they want me to be jealous. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. If anybody's jealous, it's your ass that be jealous. Y'all be clocking me. Every little thing that I do, every little thing that I say, y'all be fucking clocking me. I could say a bunch of stuff uh, like uh, about a bunch of shit, but I don't. I don't see narcissists. They be wanting, especially narcissistic females. They be wanting bitches to be jealous of them just so they can complain about bitches being jealous of them. Oh my God, everybody's so jealous. But they love to make people, try to make people jealous. They try to plant that. And I'm like, bitch, I don't have that jealousy bone in my body like you do. Um, now I know it's a natural human emotion, but it's like, girl, I don't, I don't care. Like I've noticed that women go out their way to say certain stuff to me. Because they they say certain stuff to me and they keep saying the same things about themselves over and over again. Look at me type shit over and over again. Like they want me, I want a reaction and I never get them a reaction. And I think the shit is so fucking funny because they be really wanting a reaction. And then they busy clocking me about what I got going on or woo woo woo. It's just weird. But anywho, like she was like, yeah, you always trying to um upstage me, <laughs> but I'm happy for you. She she like moved, turned her head when she said, oh yeah, but you know, I'm happy for you. Oh, so how long you had this? And I was like, oh, you know, a couple of days, but I I could tell she was probably like, in a way, I don't know why she asked that, but my guess is 
my educated guess is that it's kind of like, well, why didn't you tell me? Or why didn't you tell me first or this, that, and the third or something? I don't know. But why did it matter how long I had it? You know, why did it matter? Um, and, oh, you always trying to show, um, always trying to upstage me, always trying to outdo me or something like that. And I was just like, yeah, nah. I just laughed like, <laughs> uh, no. Um, first off, when I bought this car, I wasn't thinking about you, bitch. Okay. So that's number one. I'm not thinking about the next bitch when I do something good for myself because I'm not a narcissist. I don't have a one-sided Olympics versus me and other people. I don't give a fuck. You know what I thought about when I got this car? The first thing I thought about was I need a car that's going to be efficient for my delivery driving job, a car that's going to be safe and efficient and affordable for me and my child. That's what I thought about when I got this car. Bitch, I don't think about you. I don't give a fuck about you or the motherfucking car. I don't compare myself to you. You compare yourself to me. So because I have a 2016, you should be, first of all, you should be thankful that you get a 2014 car. Why are you sitting there worried, clocking somebody else worried about why they have their car is two years newer than yours? Big fucking deal. Both of us started off from the bottom. Both of us started off on the trains, on the buses, okay? The trains, buses, trolleys, foot on foot. We both started off doing that. We both moved on to having used cars, old cars. You finally got your new car. I congratulate you. I never said anything negative towards you or anything like, oh, bitch, you think you own any? I never said none of that because I don't give a fuck. I'm happy for you because you need to have a reliable car for my nephew. Why the fuck you? she felt that to say that towards me, right? Oh, you always trying to stay in there. Bitch, I'm not even thinking about you. You probably was thinking about me when you got your car, but I'm not thinking about you when I got this car. When I got this car, I was just basically thinking about how much I I needed to have a efficient quality car that will safely take me where I need to go for these delivery jobs. I wanted to get myself something nice for a change, my first modern car. And that was the only thing that left on my mind. I wasn't worried about the next bitch. I don't study the next bitch. I don't worry about competing or comparing myself with the next person. I'm competing with myself. Okay. If anything, I'm competing with me. Like how much better can I do this? And now that I got inspired, I'm like, shit, I'm ready to move out this fucking neighborhood. Now I'm ready to hustle, hustle, hustle every day and move the fuck out this neighborhood because you know how people are around here and people was already kind of clocking me like, Oh, she got a new car. Uh, Yeah. Don't fuck with this one over here. This is how they used to fuck with my my other car. So this is inspiring me to hustle, hustle, hustle. And also inspiring me that I know that I need to leave out this fucking neighborhood. So anyway, when she made that comment, I was just like, this bitch. God, you know what I'm saying? It's the spirit of fucking jealousy. Where bitches always fucking... Bitches in my family always do this shit. They always... Always doing these one-sided competitions. Always just fucking messy vindictive caddy i mean it's just so fucking pathetic um but anyways you know i ignored her kept it kept it pushing or whatever the case may be or whatever i just kept it pushing i was just like but i'm just letting y'all know that like how people be clocking you how people really be like you should be happy for someone that and she even though she said that she was happy for me to to me it's like it's like it's half-assed it's insincere because you didn't have to say that comment. Like, you didn't have to say that. I, I've i never, my goal was, my goal in life is never to upstage you. Every good thing that I've done for myself has nothing to do with, hmm, I got this 2016 car now. Yeah, she got a 2014. See, I'm doing better than her. I'm better than you. I never compare myself to anybody. So why would I, why would that even come to my mind? But in a narcissist. In their mind, everything is a bloody competition. Every fucking thing. And so when you just happen to unintentionally upstage someone, it's an automatic, you know? So I felt that energy while she was sitting in my passenger seat. And I was just like, hmm, she's definitely not going to be sitting in my passenger seat no more. Um, hell no. And then when I, when, when she wanted to charge her car, she was like, oh, you ain't got this type of charge. You ain't got this type of port or whatever. You already trying to clock what I don't have in the car. 
compared to what you have in your car? I said, no, actually, I do have that. And then I just noticed that when I open up this armrest, I have another um, charging port in there. So it's just showing that how people really be going out their way, especially females, going out their way to compare themselves to you. And I hate to say the word females, but some women be acting like fucking females. Just like how some men be acting like males, you know, like that. Um, but, um, anyways, guys, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Like, you know, um, the, the spirit of jealousy, as soon as good things start to happen for you, um, you know, you notice people starting to clock you, like even people in this neighborhood, you know, everybody used to come fuck with my goddamn car. Oh my God. I used to come fuck with my car. Oh my God. You said people, um, uh, used to come scratch up, scrape up my car. Like they took a key and they scraped my car because they too fucking pussy to come come to me to my face like a real bitch like a real nigga and press me and do what you do don't fucking touch my car touch me touch me bitch touch me but people used to do little sneaky little you know passive aggressive bullshit with my car one one time there was a guy that used to walk around and with a bat and hit everybody's side window that was parked on the on the curb on the street street side so all kind of fucking ill shit used to happen you know, um, so people could be very spiteful when they see that you have a newer car and shit like that. Cause I noticed, uh, people was clock. I think my neighbors, they was clocking me too. They was looking like, he's like, uh, cause I noticed my neighbor daughter, she have her a new car. Did I look upon her and go all up in the car? Did I go like this? Bitch, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm good. I'd be looking like, oh, okay. My neighbor got a nicer car. Um, this time around, cause I saw her first car. First car was, you know, clunker like mine and she upgraded. Good for you, bitch. Good for you. Even, uh, you know, if I notice my, my neighbors get a new car, I'm like, cool. You know, I'll just be like, and if they talkative, I'll be like, oh, I like your car. It's nice. Whatever. Congratulations. Or I just look and smirk and be like, cool. That's cool. That's what's up. But, um, the other day they asked this was clocking me. Cause at first I wasn't on park nowhere near, but I'm like, fuck it. How long am I high? This my shit. How long am I high? You know? So I just noticed that they was just looking. It was on. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Yeah, I got a new car. Don't fuck with my damn car. You know what I'm about to do? I'm going to give me a fucking dash cam. Because whoever fuck with my car, I'm a, I'm a voodoo. I'm a obi a I swear to fucking God. Everybody going to get fucking corona. Everybody. Every fucking body. Even the fucking dog going to get it. Everybody. 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 No, it's funny. Now, for I am going to get a dash cam because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to, especially with this car, I'm going to have to. And I have to watch where I fucking park at, too. You know, everybody else got nice cars over here. It just depends on if they know people, then people know not to fuck with their car. But because I'm not a talkative person, I'm an introvert, I'm very quiet and shit like that, you know. You know, people will try to try you, you know. But anyway, guys, um... I just wanted to show you guys, uh, show you guys how I manifested my new car, and um, also to make sure you protect your car from evil eyes and stuff like that. Like I didn't put my car on social media, just the inside. Um, be careful when you get cars, you get houses and things like that. Be careful about putting pictures of it on social media because not everybody on social media even fucking like your ass. And if you are gonna put up a picture, at least you know, evil eye emojis, at least, you know, put some type of protections on your car or something. But I would highly suggest not to, you know, anybody that, that you see on a daily basis, they're going to end up seeing your new car anyway. So don't even trip. Uh, protections for my car. I have this right here. This is the Kia Solomon. I have this right here. Now, all these stuff right here was stuff that I took with me for my very first car. This was, these were sigils and protections that I kept in my car for, for when I had my first car. My first car was Claudine. Mm -hmm. That was a 1996, no, 1997. Oh, yeah, no, it's 1996 Toyota Camry. A gold one. I love Camrys. I don't care what year it is. I love Camrys. I barely had a problem with it. Only it was the EVAP bullshit. That's that's why I stopped fucking with dealerships and started dealing with Enterprise. Because I figured they take care of their shit better. But all these old stuff, I had this shit in my old car. So all this stuff, it's like a journey. From my very first bucket, I had these protections on here. Um, and now that I have my newer car, I said, y'all are coming with me. 
you know so this is my key of solomon here i also have these prayer cards one is called abre camino uh, open roads and the other one is called um arbol arbol de dinero which means uh, money tree um this right here this right here is uh, a coyote jaw so anytime you have any part of a coyote it is to um, protect you from the law and to protect you from thieves okay so that's why i have anything that's coyote so you can get like a coyote ear a coyote foot uh, a coyote jaw i got this from papa jim's botanica um you can go to papa jim's botanica.com he's he's uh based in houston texas now i ain't gonna lie they they shipping is a little pricey but they do have some good products okay they do have some good unique stuff so i would say if you're gonna order from a place like that get some stuff that you ain't never seen before get some stuff like this some shit and candles and stuff like that that you uh, get items that you don't see at your local botanica then it'll be worth it uh, but this is a, a real real coyote's jaw all right i also have my hamsa holding my my little crusty um sigil that is my archangel michael sigil so i'm gonna have to make a new one I'm going to print out a new one, but I've had, I've literally had that on, on my car since I got my first new car. I had that sigil for, since 2018. Okay. It's very lived in. As you guys can see, it's very lived in. It's torn up and everything like that. That is the current protection that I got. And the next thing I, I'll next suggest, I would suggest is, um, uh, make you a protection mojo bag and hang it up here on the thing right here um what do you call that uh mirror thing yeah uh, get you that uh, uh i think i saw some on etsy.com a protection mojo bag strictly for cars or you could just make your own and stuff like that to really just protect your stuff because like i said as soon as good things start to happen for you you will uh you will see you'll know you will actually what i've noticed people that i didn't expect to be happy for me was happy for me and the people that should be happy for you kind of like low-key wasn't um, so you're gonna have to really protect yourself because of course when good things happen to you, you get a new car, you get a new house, and you know, people are gonna wanna come over and drop things, leave things in your home. People are gonna do the same thing with your car. So you have to be be careful with people sitting in your car and stuff like that makes you cleanse the energy and stuff. You have people sitting in your car, riding with you in the car, you cleanse your, your car. Just like the other day when I had my before I had got my new car, I had my cousin, he was helping me with repairs for the car i was paying him to repair my car crazy thing about it i paid for uh registration only for me to get only only for me to get a new car by the end of the month i shouldn't even have to pay i shouldn't have even paid it anyway so i was sitting with my male cousin and my male cousin he had the tendency to kind of veer off and talk about negative things and stuff like that um you know i love him he's cool you know he came through he helped me and stuff like that um, but you know, everybody has their social limits, you know, I have my social limits, right? So he tends to veer off and talk about negative things. So when he was sitting in my car, he was like, Oh, you forgot one part. We got to go to AutoZone. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And he, he the first thing, he, well, not first thing he said, but he started talking and he's like, yeah, I know I ain't gonna never be no millionaire and this, this, and this for me. I ain't never going. And I was just like, looked at how I was like, <laughs> And I kindly took my camphor incense and I lit it up like. And then after that, he just stopped talking. And I was like, good, because ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, you know. Yeah, don't talk no negative shit up in my motherfucking car. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring no negative energy in my car. And that's what I felt, too, when my sister was in here and I was helping her find her um her car and stuff like that. Don't 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 shoot no motherfucking negative energy at me. I didn't do that to you. You know what I'm saying? Um. So, you know, you know, always cleanse your car uh, before people come in and out and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I did. I cleansed my car, put my, my protections, my little energetic stamp on here. So it's it's great because I'm able to just, they, these, these sigils and these protections have been with me for a while. And it's coming with me no matter what. So I always keep it with me. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm going to get up off this video. I'm done hustling for the night. Um, I might post up some readings and stuff uh, soon and some videos uh, about narc abuse and uh, some other things, maybe some ritual videos. So definitely, you know, look out for it. But yeah, that's um, how I manifested. Um, <laughs> how I man manifested my call. I'm really, I'm really, really happy, y'all. And um, now it's inspiring me to want to want to get better out of life 
to keep hustling to make sure I always have money in my pocket. Not like I wasn't like that before, but now with the fire is lit up under me to con to really, really get up on out of here, you know? Yeah. To now, now the next thing is getting up out this fucking neighborhood. And I will, I will, I will get up out this fucking neighborhood and give me a whole new place and everything, you know? I'm already picturing it, scripting and everything, so... Yeah, this is how I manifested my car, y'all. So, anyways, um, I'm finna um catch y'all in the next video. Y'all be good. Gala you, gala me. Bye. Bye.